Hi, today's position, velocity, and acceleration. We've already discussed some of this stuff, but I just wanted to like formalize things a little bit more. So um, position, like we said before, is s of t, x of t, or y of t. Um, velocity is v of t. It is the derivative of the position. Okay. The derivative of velocity we call acceleration. And an initial position would be the starting point. The initial velocity is the starting speed. Starting velocity, okay? And then speed is the absolute value of velocity. So it doesn't take into account a direction. Um, displacement is your final position minus your original position. So it's just how far your change is. And then a total distance would be like if you went back and forth. So if I went like how far I traveled up, how far I would travel down, and then how far I would travel back up. Okay, so um, let's just practice some, some examples here. I have S of T, which is position. And I want to find V of T, which is just S prime of T. And A of T is S double prime of T. So position is S of T. So we're going to take the derivative of S of T, which we know is V of T. And we get 3T squared plus 1. And then S double prime of T, also known as acceleration of time, is equal to 6T. We've done those before. All right, so let's just uh, do an example from a graph. So the graph shows the position of the function of a radio controlled model car. So it is going um, to the right, going to the right, to the right, to the right, and then back to the left. Um, answer these questions and explain. So again, I like to label in that this is position. And then, so the slope of this graph is velocity. Okay. The car was going fastest between A and B. It's definitely B because the slope is steeper. So it's B because it has a greater slope. When was the car stopped? The car was stopped between C and D because the position does not change. And then at what point was the car's velocity the greatest? Velocity takes into account um, direction. So we're going to look for a positive value. So again, the slope at B compared to A compared to C compared to D is the steepest. Um, and then if we look at the last one, when was the car's speed the greatest? Now this one doesn't take into account direction. So I can see that E here has the steepest slope, but in the negative direction. But since it's the, the absolute value of velocity, E is going to be the steepest, okay? because it's the absolute value of V of T. So the steepest slope. So I'm looking for the steepest slope in either, that is either positive or negative. All right, next up. Position is modeled by S of t is equal to 6, 16t cubed minus 36t squared plus 24. And the object is moving on a horizontal line. And uh, ignore that. We need to answer all these questions. Our units are feet and seconds. So the initial position would be S of zero. So I am going to plug in zero for the function and I get 24 feet. Next, we're looking for velocity at time one. So V of one, I'm going to go ahead and take, find the velocity um, equation, which is just the derivative of the position. So 16 times three is 48 T squared minus 72 T. All right, so I will plug in 1, 48t squared 
So 1 squared minus 72 gives me a negative 24 feet per second because it's a velocity, feet per second. Uh, speed. What is the speed of the object at time one? Speed is equal to the velocity of um, the, the absolute value of the velocity. So I have v of one was negative 24. So the speed would be 24 feet per second. Doesn't matter what direction we're going, left or right, it's just how fast we're moving. So what is the acceleration of the object? I will go ahead and take the derivative of v of t. So a of t is equal to 96t minus 72. So I took the derivative of v of t. And we're going to take find the acceleration at 1. That's a 1. It's equal to 96, and our units would be feet squared feet per second squared, sorry, feet per second squared. All right, um, when is the object at rest? So when are we not moving when the velocity is equal to zero? Okay, so I'm going to do zero is equal to 48t squared minus 72t which factors to 24t times 2t minus 3, yeah? Yeah, okay, so I get t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 3 halves seconds. So the, the object is at rest at 0 seconds and 1 and a half seconds. Okay. When is the object moving to the right? So when the velocity is positive, when v of t is greater than 0, we move to the right. And when v of t is less than 0, we move to the left. So guess what? We can set up a number line test. Um, I have my, when my velocity is 0, is at, so this is v, 0 and 3 halves. And I went and set up a, I'll test v of negative 1 v of 1 and v of 2. Um, I get 24 times negative 1 times 2 times negative 1 minus 3 is a negative, that makes a negative, times a negative. Yeah, so that's going to give me a positive. So a negative times a negative gives me a positive. All right, v of 1 is 24 times 1 times 2 times 1 minus 3. So I have a positive and a negative. So I get a negative. Okay, v of 2. 24 times 2 times 2 times 2 minus 3 is, let's see, 24 and 2 make a positive. 4 minus 3 is a positive, so in, all, in total I get a positive. So I am moving to the right in my position when we are positive, the left when we are negative, and the right when we are positive. When is the object moving to the left? Oh, I need to write the intervals. Okay, so I have to the right and to the left. To the right. It's between negative infinity to zero and three halves to infinity. So negative infinity to zero or three halves to infinity. And to the left, it's when our velocity is negative. So between zero and one and a half. So zero to three halves. All right, when is the velocity of the object equal to 54? So straight up, we're just going to do 54 is equal to v of t. So I have 54 is equal to 48t squared minus 72t. Subtract 54 from both sides. 48t squared minus 72t minus 54, and I went ahead and used my calculator. I used PolySmelt, 
and I got t is equal to negative 0 0.549 or 2.049 seconds. Cool. All right, last two. What is the displacement of the object between time is 2 and time is 0? So displacement is just um, how far we change from one from the starting point to the ending point. Okay, so I do final position. It's the change in position, basically. Final position minus initial position. So our final position would be modeled by S of 2. And S of 2 is equal to 16 times 3 squared minus three, 36 times 2 squared plus 24. And that gives me 8. 8. S of 0, our starting, our initial position, we already know is 24. So I just do the final minus the initial. I get S of 2 minus S of 0 is 8 minus 24. And that gives me negative 16 feet. So if I model this on a number line, I'm starting at 24 and I'm going to 8. So at time at S of 0, I'm at 24. And then at S of 2, I'm at 8. I've changed a total of 16 feet in the negative in the left-hand direction, so it's negative. What is the total distance traveled? So I know between um, time is equal to 0 and 2 from our number line here that we change directions between time is 0. So I start at 0, and then I change. I'm moving to the left, and then at 1 and a half, I'm going to start moving to the right. So I have to figure out, so at 0, this is for time is 0 and time is 3 halves, we would be moving to the left and then to the right. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to figure out what s of two is, which we already know is eight. And then, how far did I travel between s of two and when I tr when I turned around at three halves? So s of three halves, when you plug it in, we get negative three. So the total distance I traveled is eleven units or eleven feet. But now I have to figure out the total distance between uh, one and a half and zero. So I already know S of zero is 24. So the total distance I traveled from negative three to 24 is 27 feet. Um, next, I add these two up. So total distance is equal to 11 plus 27, which is 38 feet. So what happened if I modeled this on a number line? position. Okay. I started at 24 and then I moved to, I moved left to negative three, which I can see is 27 feet. And then after I was at negative three, I went to time two at eight and I stopped at eight. So my total distance traveled would be all of the lengths added together, the absolute value of all the lengths added together. Okay. All right. We have one more example of this, and then we'll talk about calculator stuff. All right. So vertical motion, we've also done one of these. So negative 16 t squared plus 48 t plus 160 gives me my vertical motion. Remember, up is positive, down is negative. So I'm throwing a ball in the air and it's going off of the top of a cliff. How fun. All right. So initial velocity, that's V of zero. So I better find V. V of T is equal to negative 32 T plus 48. And then the 160 becomes a zero. So V of zero would be 48 feet per second. Okay. When does the ball hit the ground? The ball hits the ground when the position 
is equal to zero. So like, you know, ball hits the ground, the position is going to be at zero. So I have zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 48 t plus 160. I use my calculator, even though you could do this one, is equal to five seconds and t is equal to negative two seconds. Negative two is not in our domain, so we go ahead and just use our answer at five. Lastly, at what time, so solving for t, does the ball reach its maximum height? So what do we know? Like what helps us find relative mins and relative maxes? Oh yeah, it's when the first derivative is equal to zero. So I'm gonna be like zero is equal to negative 32t plus 48. Uh, 32t is equal to 48, so t is equal to 48 over 32, which is 3 over 2 seconds. Ta-da! All right, I'm going to do a second video for the calculator, so chill on that and then watch the video, I guess.